everyone, this is Dr. Sair from DentaVest. Today, I have created a quick video on trying to understand the differences between chronic periodontitis versus aggressive periodontitis. Let us student first see the classification of periodontitis we have. So, as per the disease distribution, you can have localized periodontitis when you have less than 30% of destruction site and you see it mainly in the incise in the first molar area or you can have a generalized periodontitis when 30% or more in the destruction site. As per the disease severity, we can classify periodontitis into mild, moderate and severe. And as per the disease progression, you can have chronic and aggressive periodontitis. Let us see quick differences. So, chronic periodontitis student can be uh, divided into localized chronic and the generalized chronic. And the aggressive periodontitis can be localized aggressive periodontitis, localized juvenile periodontitis, generalized aggressive periodontitis and rapidly progressive periodontitis. So, how do you distinguish? between chronic and aggressive periodontitis. In chronic periodontitis, the amount of periodontal destruction that you see is equivalent with oral hygiene or plaque level. You will see, yeah, no, no wonder why this guy has so much of bone loss because I see there's a bad hygiene, there's a lot of plaque and calculus accumulation. While in case of aggressive periodontitis student, there's a minimal plaque accumulation. Look, good hygiene. So this is the amount of bone destruction that you have in aggressive periodontitis is inconsistent. You will see, okay, why this guy has so much of bone loss? I don't see that much of plaque or calculus accumulation. In chronic periodontitis, you will see supragingival and subgingival calculus associated with calculus formation. You see gingival inflammation here. You see pocket formation, loss of periodontal attachment, vertical or horizontal bone loss can be seen, occasional separation, bleeding of gingiva in response to periodontal probe, tooth movement, and the tooth can become loose. While in aggressive periodontitis, yes, they can be deep periopocket advanced bone loss which is three to four times faster than the chronic periodontitis presence of periodontal abscess can be seen and there's a lymph node enlargement if you see radiographically in the chronic you can see both vertical or horizontal bone loss vertical is like more isolated bone loss like a cup shape or saucer shape defect along the isolated tooth while the horizontal bone loss will be more generalized bone loss that we see around multiple teeth while in case of aggressive periodontitis you see mainly the vertical bone loss which is more advanced bone loss that is more infra bony defect or intra bony defects can be seen now in the chronic the disease progression is slow but may be modified by systemic disease or environmental factor behavior factor that can make the progression rapid like smoking and stress or emotional factor while in disease progression aggressive is going to be very quick a rapid destruction now the bacteria which are involved in chronic is mainly porphyromonas gingivalis bacteroid forceps or trypanema denticola, while aggressive is mainly associated with AA, actinobacillus, actinomycetum concomitans, or porphyromonas gingivalis. The prevalence of chronic periodontitis is not associated really with the age, but length of the time the periodontal tissues are challenged by chronic plaque accumulations. You will see more changes in the middle ages and elderly, that means. While in case of aggressive periodontitis, the individuals are young, that's why it is also called a juvenile periodontitis, less than age 30. Systemically healthy individuals, familial aggregation or genetic predisposition of disease individual can be seen in aggressive periodontitis. Like in localized aggressive periodontitis, you can see chemotaxis defect of the neutrophil. The treatment for the chronic periodontitis conventional mechanical therapy, SRP, practicing adequate home care procedures. While aggressive periodontitis conventional mechanical therapy along with that, you will also need some systemic antibiotic microbiological testing. Now, let us see some pictures of chronic periodontitis here. You can see there's a recession, right? There's a lot of plaque and calculus deposition you can see here. And in this x-rays here, the periapical x-rays, we can see generalized horizontal bone loss. Also, in certain teeth surrounding, you can see there is a vertical bone loss. That is actually an infrabony or intrabony defect. While in case of aggressive periodontitis, you see such a clean mouth. No plaque or calculus we are seeing here or minimum. But... So much of bone loss, you can see aggressive, rapid destruction. And you can see this sloping defect, angular defect, this is the vertical bone loss. If you can see here, and you can see so much of bone loss in this case, because problem here is not plaque or calculus, problem here is genetic. They have a chemotactic defect of neutrophil. Neutrophil cannot eliminate the bacteria properly. That will lead to more inflammation and more bone loss. 